Hi and welcome back to Studio Tamara the Mystical Painters. Today we are going to be doing a plein air painting in the studio um, and if you don't have fancy televisions or cameras you can just take a photograph and print it on your computer paper. We're going to be doing a little abstract plein air scene with a couple silhouetted little fawns in there. So here's the picture we're going to be using and I am going to be putting it on this masonite board. I gessoed this side and I took a pencil, kind of sketched in the doughs, then I sprayed it with fixative. So now we can begin. Um, I have also in here how to add animals to your paintings in my book, Plain Air Painting Tips and Tales. So um, it's kind of a cool, a uh, pretty thorough explanation of how to do that here in the book. So if you don't have the book, I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, also, before we get started, if you like my videos, please hit like and subscribe. It's free, supports my channel, and thank you to my Patreon sponsors. Even a dollar a month really helps this channel keep going. So, let's get started. Step one, get on an old flannel shirt to protect your clothes. My palette is always set up the same way. I did do a video specifically on the colors and the order of the palette, if you want to check that video out. So I have an 1114 piece of masonite and an eight by 10-ish sized computer printout of the painting. We're gonna kind of make this an abstract. So we are going to get out here a size six filbert brush, dip it in some turf, wipe it on a good rag. I have a little walnut oil here. And I am going to squint. All right, and we're gonna kind of do the values first. So I'm gonna mix a little Portland gray, a little violet gray. My paints are kind of dry because they're from last Saturday. A little bit of cerulean blue. Okay, a truly beautiful gray is mixing viridian with alizarin crimson and then white. That makes just the most beautiful silvery gray. If it's too red, add a little more viridian. Too green. Add a little more alizarin, too red. <laughs> We're doing the dance now, too red, too green. Okay, you want it a little bluer? Add a little cobalt. All right, and then when I squint, this is gonna be very abstract. So I just wanna get bit of this purpley color in here. Just taking different broken grays. Very this is going to be very abstract, meaning it's not going to have a lot of detail. It's very easy for you guys to do at home after you sketch your little babies in. You just let's see. We got some more dark over here. So well, this is an alternative to plein air painting because we could go outside, but it's probably about 17 degrees and very cold. Would not be a pleasant time. The sun isn't out right now and I felt like painting. So you wanna paint, you should be able to paint. So I'm mixing my purples and yellows to be a dark base gray and then a little Alizarin and Viridian. Alizarin um, 
is like that maroon red color, alizarin crimson, and viridian is green. It makes the most beautiful silvery gray, as I said. I just love this color. And you can alter it and tint it and do all kinds of things. So practice, practice color mixing always. All right, so I'm just going to put, and then again, up on the top here, the far tree line. See the hint of, it's just abstract though. This is not, I'm not trying to do a, a Rembrandt or a photocopy. So many planar paintings I noticed today, everyone's trying to make it look as real as possible and kudos to the folks, you know, that, that, that do that. But we have cameras for that. I, I kind of like it better when art looks different than photos. And... Okay, so I'm just layering these grays that we made right now in big chunks with a big brush. And there's a big tree out here. I squint just like when I'm outside when I squint. So here's our far tree line. I'm squinting just like if I'm outside. So here's our far tree line. Right there it is. Fabulous, happy, beautiful little tree line. <clears throat> there is a band here of a fog where it's lighter, and it's also down below. So we're going to get to that as well. I'm still just using the grays that we mixed, keeping it very simple. Got the dog here in the studio with me. Okay. Notice I'm just kind of touching the brush around the outline I put of the deer. There's no detail here. It's just a very basic outline here of this guy. I'm sorry, girl. Well, I guess it could be a guy. We don't really know. A guy who lost his horns. <laughs> okay, so see how we're just having fun. Just Touch, touch, dab, dab. You know, no, no pressure. This is very abstract, very basic. It's going to be very loose and fun and free. No pressure, no stress. Have fun. Pause the video. Go make yourself a cup of hot steaming tea. Have a little tea party with your stuffed animals. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> This is great fun to me. This is as close to happiness as I could describe to anyone. It's just painting, having fun, complete freedom here. Okay, so see already, you can kind of tell what we got going. All right, our next big move here is, let's see, so we don't want a bad tangent. A bad tangent would mean if the smoke stops, or the smoke, the, the, the line of color here, the darkness stops right at the top of the, the ears, which is kind of what I have. Whereas you'll see in the picture, there's white below, so we kind of want to, or a lighter below. So what what I want to do now is I'm going to take a little white into this gray. 
a little cad red light to mix it. Still got that gray on the brush. I know it's not good for brushes to mix right on your board. Add a little walnut oil. I just got this at Kroger, nothing fancy. And um, if you really want to lift off, this is a great teachable thing here. If you want to lift some of this paint off, you can use a dry brush, just like that. So today I was at Turtle Creek Farm and I got to see some Brazilian deer and hand feed them. I think we'll add a picture to show you. It was snowing and it inspired me to paint these little deer. So see, all I'm doing is lifting with a dry brush and scrubbing off the oil. Sorry, scrubbing off the oil and then wiping it. Why did I do that? Because otherwise you just mix mud and if you want it lighter there. Then we have to have somewhere, now watch this, that we can make it. Oh yeah, beautiful. See how much lighter that is? And we're using that. Gray, it's got a little cad red. You know, we could almost add a little orange in there. This is bold and dangerous, I know. But a very little, little, little. We don't want a lot of color in here anyway. Very little. I'm going to use the brush. We're going to use the palette knife. Anybody can do this. Does not take any special secret talent to do this. Just follow along. So I'm lightening here a little. This will also make this deer pop out and really see her. I'm going to call it a her just because it makes me happy to do that. Okay. Now we do have this tree over here, but I don't even know if I'll put that in because we're going to be making this so abstract. I mean, this is really going to be a, an abstract. And I'll show you how to break these hard lines too. So basically what we've got here is I'm going to take a break and show you a picture of the lovely little deer I got to hand feed today at Turtle Creek Farm. Now here's an excellent opportunity for us to play with some paint. So how we're going to do that, we are going to get a little bit of that pink and white on our brush. And we are going to just come up and I'm going to show you a few secrets. So you can take this gray and pull it down. Or you can take the pink up. Either way, you can't screw it up because number one, Think of it as just an abstract. We're having fun. And our, our job here is to make this all blend in together. There's no rough edges. There's no sharp edges. Everything is blended together. See that? We need a little more of the pink and white mix. Put it on. See how that 
starts to look like a little bit of the foggy stuff. And then as it comes up here, you just barely touch the side of your brush, barely. And then you just kind of let it fade. Kind of just like your stress. Let it fade away and let it go. When you're painting. Soft edges, soft edges. We want to make them hard because we think, oh, there's leaves, there's trunks. But edges are very soft and far away. And I'm going to even blur it more than it is because this is just my little abstract interpretation. I'm so excited to see yours when you're done down below in the comments. Please share them with me. Okay, look at that. Just very little, very little. Okay, next I think I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do the same thing here at the bottom. We're gonna just fluff it down really light, like feather light. Wipe your brush on your towel, feather light, wipe your brush. So, so far we're really only using a couple piles of, of colors. We're not using a lot of color. If you need a little more of a lighter color, put it in. Now we are going to add a little blue to that lighter mix. So we can start to put some of the grasses in the midst in the foreground here in front of this guy. This is super duper abstract, easy peasy, not a lot of detail here guys. So I want to keep it simple as we can. We want to just get paint on the board in big clumps, big areas. Add a little cobalt blue. Add a little more. Practice, practice with your colors. You may want to add a little purple. I like purple as long as it's not too much. Because, you know, in the reference, the front looks a little lighter. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to... Do this lighter. So I'm gonna go across the bottom. See how easy this is? Piece of cake. You guys can do this. Don't say you can't, you can. Okay, add a little purple, add a little blue. And here we go. Just scrumble, 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 stick it in there. There we go, and then it kind of slowly blends in. I know your brain's telling you, hold on, that's a leg, we gotta paint a leg. Nope, you paint things to make the eye trick itself into thinking it's a leg. We're getting there. Now we're going to take a dry brush and just drag up some of the grasses so that they look like there's a couple light and dark in here. Just drag them up real light. Easy peasy. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, maybe not that big. Beautiful thing with oil paint is you can play with it. We are going to mix kind of a white and yellow color for the sky. We don't want it that yellow, I guess. Maybe we could use a little Naples in there. Now, if it's too yellow, that's too yellow. Uh, you can add a little orange. Let's see, let's see how this is. That's, that's better. We want that evening kind of color sky. So we're going to put a little bit of this orange and yellows in here. If it's too bright, we can add gray. But we just want to keep it loose and abstract. We don't want to overpaint it. It's the biggest mistake people make is they put something, they love it, 
and they all of a sudden want to put more and more and more of it. And then before you know it, there's too much. It overpowers. It's not cool anymore. So the yellow looks real good because we got all these like purpley, purpley grays in, in here. So. so yellow and purple are what? Complimentary, right? So we're just going to add a few little suggestions of, you know, the sky peeking through here and there. Because when I look at the reference, I see a couple, even though we're not trying to be photographic, we want it to still be believable. Okay, I'm going to turn the light off. It's pretty good. I mean, color-wise. <laughs> now I'm just going to take some white and cad yellow light. And there it is. So just a little, little lightness here. Put a little, barely touching it around it. You know, we're just suggesting this is abstract, so. I may even want to touch here a little bit in the fog, like coming down. I have some smaller brushes I've selected to fill in the deer. This one is a bright size one. And I'm going to dip it in some turp. And I'm just going to take a little violet gray into our grays we already had. Add a tiny bit of burnt sienna. Just a little. And I think it's going to be too light, but let's see. Too light. Okay, so let's use some burnt umber. That'll make it dark. And I'm just going to put a little spot here where the back leg would be. A little spot here where the front would be. And you can do this at home. This is easy. Anybody can do this. Squint, put it in. A little, there's a little dark here. Maybe we might need to bring in a little bit of... French ultramarine blue because that'll make it make it real dark. Yeah, that's what we needed right there and right here. We need a little darker. Okay. I'm just trying to make a very, very abstract, fast, simple, basic, basic painting. So when I squint, I see dark, dark, dark. There's dark here, dark here. It might be too much, but I see dark there. Dark here, it's probably too dark. And then the ears I see are dark at the edges. Let's see if we can, okay, dark ears. And I just wanna get the impression not trying to do a studio painting for a show. Just get an impression. A shadow or mystery deer. And the whole time you're painting this, think about how how happy you are and how much fun you're having. And every time you look at that painting, you're gonna remember how happy you are and how much fun you're having. It's kind of magical. Anybody can paint. You just have to practice, just like anybody can write. Remember kindergarten where we had to write the letter A a thousand times, and then we had to write the letter B? Oh, boy. Yeah, that was good times, huh? <laughs> Same thing with this. Just the more you do it, the better you're going to get, and the more comfortable you're going to get. It can be done. Okay, now I want to kind of go back to our 
sienna, a little sienna. I'm not trying to do a lot of detail, but I do want to have a little bit of it. I want it to kind of make sense. It's abstract. So the deer, um, the back of the deer kind of gets lost, meaning it's very close in value to I need a little more sienna. Very close in value to the background. It does stand out, but it, it's a close in value, so we want to make sure that we have that. We can put a little bit of highlight on there later, add a little ochre, just because these are things that I'm seeing when I look at this picture. I'm like, okay, I see a little ochre. This is a little lighter here. No, just for shits and giggles let's put some pink on here too pink okay it's the beauty of oil something's too bright you can make it go away very quickly okay so i'm kind of just playing at this point i'm just squinting and putting in colors want to keep her as abstract as possible, as simplistic. We don't want a lot of detail in her, so let's just blend these a little, a little more sienna. The bottom is a little darker here. Oh, that's tricky. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. But so much fun. Starting to look a little bit like our friend here is uh, a little buddy standing out in the woods, huh? And just get some real light color on her. We can always add a little orange or sienna. Very little. If you overdo it, it's too much very quickly. So I'm just trying to kind of get the basics in. But we've, we're, I'm kind of battling here with lights and darks to, to get the shape of the animal. Like these are darks. And they come in where her leg is and where her tummy is. And then these are darks, too. It's just where she is. And it's tricky because so much of it's, like, lost in, in the fog, too. So. Yep, that's straight cobalt. Anybody wondering? But right now I'm really just playing. Trying to figure it out. Yeah, that's pretty good. That, that's getting there. Okay, and her head up here has a little color. Gotta be real careful because I could see around her eyes she's got some white. So we're gonna wanna put that in too, but she is in shadow. So mix a little gray and white and just touch in the ear. That'll suggest it. Just touch. It's too far away and too fogged out to see detail. So that's how we're going to do that. Up by her face. Got a little gray here. little gray here. Right here and under her chin. Okay, so we're just taking little bits of white, putting a few flecks in the ear, just a few. We're probably gonna go over all this and kind of muffle it down some 
because we want it more abstract really than it is and this nose is much too big so we just cut it down like that yeah okay the little buddy next to her he's just kind of this lovely little lavender and white kind of color let's get this camera in the right place by golly and that's kind of what he looks like just a fuzzy little combo of colors kind of like this this brush is too little for this what am i thinking I tend to do that. You gotta remember, use a big brush. Okay. Okay, using a little bit of sienna and purple. And we're just having fun now. We're real loose, real light, light strokes. A little more purple. We're just suggesting these to your word. As a matter of fact, we're gonna wipe the detail out of the other one. It's just too much. If you like it and yours, leave it there, but there's just too much. I want this to be much more abstract. I don't want all the detail. Because the whole point of doing this is to have it abstract. Abstract. Okay, okay so I put a little black on the eyes. And now I'm going to just see what happens if I put a little light here above this eye and a little bit of highlight around the ear here. That might be too much. Might be too much. Let's see, let's add a little orange. Just a hint. Okay, and then there's just a... See, I'm starting to get too detailed. I don't want detail, so... I think I'm gonna kill all that detail. So let's... Let's correct this. Let's correct this get rid of the detail on this guy all I'm doing is wiping off because our eyes are going to make this up we can't see all these individual little hairs on this ear way that far away no way our mind tells us to put them there but guess what? We can't see them. We can't see all the differences in colors here in this face. We can't see all these white little bitty hairs I put around this eye. So if you want it to look real, you got to get rid of all that. It's all got to go. is a little, I do see very visibly here, a dark, some darkness. So we do have to put in what you visibly see, like when you squint, if you see something, stick it in. So as we refine and we barely touch, 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 real light. It's starting to come to life. And I went in and I darkened. I added dark. Added a little more dark. Little blue and brown, a little darker. Because it is darker on this side. This is all very dark. This is and it's abstract, so we just want it loose. The little guy in the front, he can be a little brighter. He can have a little more color. He's a little closer up. There we go. Now it's, 
Now it's starting to look, there we go. One of the incredibly magnificently cool things about doing something abstract is it looks real when you back away from it. You know, your mind makes things up. We're having fun, let's finish this up. So you can get it on your wall. We are going through and just wiping the face out on this little guy because we want no detail. We want this to be abstract. There's a lot of detail here. This is very abstract. So we've got the basic shape of the two deer. I think the grasses need to come a little higher here and then we could put in a few branches and we're done. So our abstract plein air with the abstract deer, I think it's working pretty good. Um, we do need to break a few of these hard lines up here. Add a little white and lavender. Just kind of break them up. There are some, some straight lines. You just want that real soft. That's real far away. Real soft, there it is. Real soft, there it is. There. Okay, now, the other thing I noticed <clears throat> is that we need a little more of our white, pinky kind of gray um, up a little higher. On the edges of any painting, you want mountains to go up when they go off, not down. Same thing with trees um, or steam. This is just more, much more pleasing to the eye. So instead of this going down like that, we want it to kind of come. And you can use your fingers. This is just a fun little abstract painting. There's that. And then we do kind of want to fuzz out right here a little. Just a little, ever so tight. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Just really lightly fuzz that up. Okay, and then we can add a couple branches. I don't want to overdo it though, because I want to keep it very basic. We are going to mix some burnt umber and alizarin crimson with some white. And we're going to get a real dark gray. And then we're going to put that in our turp. There, by the way, is my paint tube and paintbrush graveyard down there. That is a huge three-foot-tall glass apothecary full of paintings of paintings past. <laughs> All right, so we're using the <clears throat> uh, Gamsol, or odorless mineral spirits, or turp, or whatever you have to really water this down. And then to do these branches, if we wanna put some in, why not? I think we should. Then we're just gonna come up, hold the brush from the top, and you know what, that's too dark. I'm gonna add white to this mix, just it's too dark. My paints are getting crusty. It's almost time to make a new palette here. Okay, so just drag it. Um, okay, so we want to drag it up, up, at least that gives it a little bit of um, <clears throat> yeah, depth pers perspective or whatever. It, it's still abstract, but it kind of now has a little bit of nature in there, a little bit of something else other than just so we're going to add a few of these branches just really lightly suggest a few I don't want as many as in the picture there because That's just too many. So this is a dead tree. Let's see what happens if we just do that. It's almost too light when it enters into this dark area. 
So a little more brown, a little more blue, like a little darker pile here. And just play with it. I mean, oil painting is problem solving. It's playing. It's constantly, oh, does this work? No. Okay, try this, you know. And just kind of play with it all. So, um, I don't know if I like the branches. I actually kind of liked it better before, but, eh, it's all right. I guess the branches give it three-dimensionality or something, right? If you're going to put them, go all the way off the top so that it really pushes the, the rest of the things back. And it looks like we need a little more dark here. You know, instead of this, this browning blue, we could almost add some purple to it, too. And I'm not going to put as many. Um, for convincing branches, by the way, a quick cheat, an easy way for beginners to do them is make little letter Ys. <clears throat> you know, a Y. So, basically, you would do, you know, a Y like that. As we refine a couple of these branches, put a little lighter in here. It's about done. We could do a little palette knife work and just add a couple of real bright highlights now. And as I always say, when you're finished, sign your painting. I was always told never to sign in red, but my rebelliousness, I do sign in red. So that's something you wanna to practice to your signature or whether you wanna use letters or symbols or your whole name. Some artists want their name legible, so if you're at a show, you know who did it. Some people like a symbol, you know, whatever works the best for you. There it is, our little impressionistic painting, very minimal detail, a couple branches, a little bit of detail in, the, in her face. And that's about it. Otherwise, this is very impressionistic. So here's our little impressionistic painting. All done. Can't wait to see what yours look like. Put them in the comments below. Just catch the impression in nature. Practice by plein air painting outside. Bring it inside. Have fun. Can't wait to see how yours turned out. Have a great day.